when Aaron had heard the story Moses had to tell of what he had witnessed upon Mount Horeb, he too became filled with a burning desire to carry out God's command. Together they resolved to carry the word of God unto the people of Israel. And so Moses and Aaron journeyed into Egypt and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel. Aaron repeated to them the words the angel had spoken unto Moses and did signs in the sight of the people. And the people believed. Now, Aaron and Moses came upon their most difficult task, persuading Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to allow the people to go three days' journey into the wilderness to sacrifice unto the Lord. Your Majesty, these are the two men that have requested an audience. Audience granted. Now then, what are your names? I am called Moses, Your Majesty, and this is my brother Aaron. What is it that has brought you before your king? Your Majesty, we have been sent to you by our Lord God of Israel. He demands that you let the people go three days' journey into the desert that we might sacrifice in his honor. Oh, and who is this Lord that I should obey his command? I am king of Egypt. I give the commands and the people obey me. I will not permit them to leave their daily tasks. Please, your majesty, I pray that you'll let us go. Only three days to let us sacrifice. That's all we ask. How is it that you, Moses and Aaron, find time to come here and make such an irresponsible request? Our Lord, God of Israel, has sent us to carry out his will. You should not anger the Lord our God. Oh, enough of these absurd remarks. Scribe? Uh, Yes, your majesty. Uh, It seems to me the Israelites are too idle. They do not have enough work to occupy their time, so I'll give them more. But your majesty... Silence! Summon my taskmaster. Yes, your majesty. I shall tell them that we will no longer furnish the people's straw with which to make bricks... From this moment on, the Israelites shall gather their own straw, and I will not tolerate any decrease in the number of bricks they produce. You may be certain that I will expect exactly the same number. But, Your Majesty, that is impossible. Your king will decide what is impossible and what is not. And I shall let it be known that anyone who listens to your treasonable talk will be punished. And so, yet another decree of Pharaoh's was forced upon Israel. The Egyptian taskmasters appointed officers among the Hebrews to see that they not only gathered the straw, but also made the same number of bricks as before. But the new decree was too harsh. The Israelites were not able to carry it out. Word of this soon reached Pharaoh, and he called for the officers of the children of Israel. Your taskmaster made you officers to see that your workers fulfill their quota. Why is it they are not producing enough bricks? It's not our fault, Your Majesty. The the workers travel throughout the land of Egypt searching for straw, and then they have little time at all to complete their work. I will not tolerate excuses. I'll teach you and the rest of the people to regret your idleness. But, Your Majesty, we are never idle. We we always have more than enough work to do. If this were true, you Israelites never would have asked for time to worship your Lord. Take them away, guard! See that they're severely beaten. Pharaoh ordered all the officers of the children of Israel beaten and the people in turn were worked to exhaustion. It was not long, therefore, before they turned upon Moses and Aaron and blamed them for Pharaoh's hatred and his unreasonable demands. My lord, why hast thou sent me to speak in thy name? Since Aaron and I have spoken to Pharaoh... He has treated the people even more cruelly. Now shalt thou see what the Lord will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand, Pharaoh shall let Israel go to the wilderness. I am an angel of the Lord. I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. Say unto the people, 
The Lord will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. He will redeem you with a stretched out arm. He will bring you in unto the land of Canaan, and he will give it unto you for an inheritance.